Hello, everybody, and welcome to Masu Pro Wrestling. I'm your host and sole commentator, Masu Pro Wrestling Ton. And tonight is the night where we need to see who is going to continue and move on and qualify for the Elimination Chamber coming up for the Icon and Idol Division Championships, respectfully. So far, Schmeeps and Tyranno Maximum, your open weight champion, have qualified for the uh, for the Elimination Chamber, and T and Mama Inu will be moving on to the losers, uh, the losers multi man elimination match. But now we're gonna start off with Idol Division contest for the qualifiers. Glitchy Bastards is coming off a win against the newly debuted Rocky, who uh, was trying to step up to the Spooky Queen. It is that season. As of time of recording, I guess we just dated the episode. Uh, <laughs> but their opponent will be none other than MPW's own Bunny Bean Usino. And now Usino has had a history with Glitchy in the sense that Glitchy just can't quite put away the Bunny Bean, you know? It doesn't matter how many people are in the match, you know, it doesn't matter how many times they fight. Usino is constantly outdoing glitchy in these matches so this could be a potential issue for glitchy bastards to move on to the elimination chamber glitchy is a terrifying stature of a woman is a terrifying human being and would be incredibly dangerous inside the elimination chamber because she's incredibly dangerous in any match so i would say she is one of the biggest threats to the title at this point this will be the second last Qualifier match before the losers bracket. Glitchy Bastards versus Usino. And Glitchy goes for a clothesline immediately grabbed by Usino, but the rope break because of those long legs. As I said, Usino just has Glitchy's number when it comes to these fights. Size doesn't always mean you're going to win the fight. It's not about the size of the bunny in the fight. It's about the size of the heart. Ugh. Slams Usino down though. Maybe Usino is probably one of the more durable when it comes to landing from fall or from high falls, as as they are just constantly jumping. Knees to the side of the head. Off the ropes, axe handle, middle rope, the magic middle rope. Glitchy has had somewhat of a mean streak as of recently. Was unable to capture the title, but has been somewhat dominant. I mean, she's always been a little bit dominant, but somewhat dominant in recent weeks. Just pounding away at Usino. This is for an opportunity with five other competitors for the shot for a shot. At the Idol Division Championship, the first time ever, the Idol and Icon Division Championships will be defended in multi-man matches, and will be inside six tons of six hundred tons of steel in the Elimination Chamber match. Usano just being picked up like a child as Glitchy could. Continues to dish out the discipline, but common commentators curse as always. Usino trying to gain some momentum back. Unable to keep it though. Ooh. Up against the ropes and now just working over the arms of Usino. Usino, it is very dangerous to let someone like Glitchy get this much, much momentum. So Usino's got to start picking up the pace. Bumps him. Oh, cross body trying to get that momentum, as I said, taking down Glitchy Sling Blade connects. And Usano goes for the pin in the center of the ring. It's probably too early, but two count. An early two count from Usano. Maybe thinking she can get the win here. Maybe they have the ability. But Glitchy back and forth here, making sure that Sidewalk slam, making sure Usino doesn't have the shot. Trying to keep her thrown as the scariest woman in MPW. Prove that against Rocky. 
And can she prove it against Usaino, someone who has just consistently been able to beat her? Goozles Usaino. Scouts it, though, is going for the frame drop. Ducks the line. Pele kick doesn't knock down Glitchy, though. She stays up. Dodging the punches. Forearm to the chin. Takes her down. Usaino maintaining control as Glitchy rolls out. Tries to get some space. But when it's the bunny bean from outer space... Lands the leg drop off the over the top ropes. Somersault. Two count rolls. Glitchy back in. Off the ropes. Basement drop kick blocked by Glitchy. Off the ropes. Scoops. And Glitchy's hearing those voices in her head again. Bear hug, just squeezing the life. You know, a lot of us here in the MPW, you know, family, the group, they, we all want to hug Usaino. But I, I think that Glitchy right now is really trying to hurt Usaino with that bear hug. Ooh, forearm just knocked away. The size advantage showing here in the fight. Neckbreaker. Snaps the back, kick up, off the, there we go, kip up, but Glitchy's not down for long, gets back up real quick, but that forearm knocked her off her feet, ducks the, ducks down, misses her with the clothesline, goozles Usaino, and now Usaino's looking to get a frame drop for their troubles, a little bit close to the ropes though, referee doesn't think so though, one, two, kick out at two, barely gets the shoulder up. And Glitchy can't believe it. Glitchy may be looking for that clothesline off the top rope. Nope. Elbow drop crashes and burns. And Usaino punches. Flurry of punches. Looking for a springboard? No. Usaino said it's not the time off the ropes. Knee drop to the face. Right on that forehead in the center of the of the head <laughs> and again with those punches just making sure glitchy has no room to breathe snap mare off the ropes drop kick to the side of the face it looks like glitchy was grabbing her nose there maybe reshaped a few things on her face there pele kick and now usaino's going up top for the bunny stomp connects in the corner one two could no usaino nearly qualifying for the elimination chamber this would be usaino's first match for the idol division championship it would be glitchy's second and usaino's thinking about going back up early axe handle reverse drop kick by glitchy trading momentum here Picking up Usano by the neck and just tossing them. And again, just tossing them like they're a sack of shit, like they're nothing. Weight doesn't matter when you're the size of Glitchy. She can pick up anyone and now a leg submission locked in. Wearing down those boots of Usano, those bunny feet, the lucky rabbit's foot of Usano. Usaino gets out holding that leg. That's going to have done some damage to the ligaments in her knees. In their knees, in their legs, in their calves, everything. Going to make it incredibly difficult to do a lot of those jumping maneuvers that Usaino is known to do. But stomps to the back of the head. In other sports, you might consider that illegal. But not here in MPW. Strikes to the back of the head. Off the ropes. Moonsault. Scorpion death drop by Usaino. Beautifully positioned and done. Looking to maybe go for that bunny hop Pele kick. Doesn't like look like Glitchy's in position for it. Throws Glitchy off the ropes. Clothesline bumps him. Now Glitchy's got that sidewalk slam. Planting Usaino spine first into the canvas. Goes for the pin. One, two... Three and Usaino 
We'll be moving to the loser's bracket as Glitchy. And Glitchy isn't going to stop there, showing just why, how dangerous Glitchy is. This referee needs to get out of the ring. He is constantly in between the idol division shenanigans here. As Glitchy is looking to not end this quickly, pu putting a statement to the idol division. Yeah, just get out of there, dude. You're not paid enough. Glitchy is going to continue the carnage of the match, showing everybody getting this table out. You don't see tables very often. In MPW, Sino is looking to be in trouble. Choke slammed through the table. Glitchy sending a clear message to the Idol Divisions that Idol Division members that have qualified for that elimination chamber. Be ready for anything. And Usaino will move to the loser's bracket and have to fight her fight their way out of five other competitors or four other competitors and not including themselves and glitchy will move on to the elimination chamber coming up in a couple of weeks a handful of weeks but we will move on to our next match tonight we'll see you guys there all right it's time for the random selection double eliminator tournament we're continuing the loser's bracket. And it will be nothing but a different breed. Mama Inu and T the Sheba making their entrances to start off first. The tag team randomly selected the family members here. T the Sheba and Mama Inu defeated Minty Clovers and Rize to get to this point. And they're looking to get up and fight King's Court, Unchained, and Gareth. These two are probably the team with the most synergy just naturally being related to each other. These teams, they've worked together their entire life. T, T was raised by Mama Inu, was trained by Mama Inu. They know everything about each other and they know exactly how to work successfully together. So we will see Mama Inu and T the Sheba took down probably one of the more impressive teams, though they didn't make it very far in Team Mighty and Mystic with Reese and Minty. Two very uh, decorated singles competitors, but their opponents will be nothing, nothing close to a cakewalk here. They will be fighting against the team of BA Tycho and the Sleepy Pengu. Justice never sleeps when these two enter the arena. VA Tycho has qualified for his Elimination Chamber spot. Sleepy Pengu has not. Sleepy lost to Unchained and will be losing, moving to the loser's bracket. T and Mama Ina will move to their loser's brackets respectively. This is a battle between the divisions here. And this tournament's all about glory here tonight, working with your partners. These two are incredibly dangerous together. B.A. Tycho's size and Sleepy's technique and speed work so well in tandem. I can This match will go either way. Justice Never Sleep beat Technically Support, who moved on in the loser's bracket, which was the team of Flare Zero and Glitchy. Another team that is great synchronization. T will start it out. And Sleepy will start it out for their team. T starts it off immediately. Kick to the gut and pedigree connects. Going for those early eliminations. Because the eliminations in these matches are so, so important. B.A. Tycho tossing Mama Inu off of him. Breaking up the pin and now T's going for it. But B.A. Tycho in complete control here. B.A. Tycho definitely has the size advantage. Running away from Mama Inu, though, it looks like on the outside. And if you've never seen a match like this, let me explain it to you. It's open weight, so anyone can fight anyone. Doesn't matter, you know, gender roles are, are being destroyed here in MPW. Weapons are legal, but as you can see, you can only have 10 seconds outside the ring to keep those... Those folks that like to hang outside the ring, inside it. You can only pin your opponent inside the ring or submit them. 
Though you can get count out eliminations and you have to eliminate both of your opponents. And T is just getting manhandled by Sleepy Pengu on the outside. That Fisherman Suplex. Or the Fisherman Buster. I don't even know. Fisherman, no, Fisherman Suplex, I guess. I don't know. Throws, it, throws her into the Timeskeeper corner and gets in at 7. These matches are all about getting the first elimination. If you can do that, then you're pretty much golden. Sleepy Pengu fights out of it. Off the ropes. Sends T. Sleepy Pengu just tossing T up. Sleepy Pengu is the strategist of their team. Tags in B.A. Taiko. And Mama Inu is tagged in now. B.A. Taiko in plain sight to Mama Inu. T out on the ground. Could see the fastest elimination in the double eliminator history. No, but a two count was a near fall. For Mama Inu, T the Sheba out on the ground. Too much damage dealt by Sleepy Pengu. And B.A. Taiko is the powerhouse in this group. I would say maybe B.A. Taiko and T are the powerhouses for their teams. Where Mama Inu and Sleepy Pengu are the, the speeds and strategists. B.A. Taiko looking to go after T though maybe. Take out the non-legal participant. You must tag in your partner to be the legal participant, so the only person in danger of being eliminated is B.A. Tycho, but he just takes it to T, throwing her into that corner barricade. Who slapped the back of that? Mama Inu's not going to take too kindly to this guy. Slapping around. Her daughter tosses B.A. Tycho like he's nothing, and that man is not a small person. He is massive. So that is not an easy feat to just toss him like they're nothing. He tries to goozle Mama Inu. Ooh, takes the wind right out of her. B.A. Tycho goes back outside and is looking for those steel steps. Weapons are legal, as I said before. B.A. Tycho may be more interested in what Mama Inu is doing here than the steel steps. Countout victories are very possible and very fruitful. Busts open, Mama Inu. But they're also dangerous, especially if you're if you're in a two-on-one situation. You don't want to be caught outside the ring. Mama Inu twist neck breaker. Five count six. Still fighting on the outside. B.A. Tycho will not let up. Throws Mama Inu into that steel post and now makes his way into the ring. Kind of bumps our ref a bit. Going going after T. B.A. Tycho's taking it upon himself to go after everyone. He does break up the count by coming out here. But Mama Inu successfully makes it in the ring either way. And now Mama Inu may be eyeing up Sleepy. Choosing not to, though. Going against it. Mama Inu in a two-on-one position. A very expert play by B.A. Tycho here. DDT to the masked man. The so-called voice of the chat super kick. Nearly knocking his head off. And now Mama Inu is looking for the pin or for the tag. I don't I don't know what Mama I think Mama Inu might be concussed. I don't think she knows where she is right now. Took out BA Taiko with that super kick. But Mama Inu is busted open, and I think she's confused and lost here. BA Taiko's been making this a two-on-one and just taking out both his opponents. We saw a table earlier this episode of MPW. A little sore spot for Usaino here. Mama Inu brought in the table. And now the two-on-one in the corner here. Mama Inu fights out of it, though. Takes B.A. Taiko. Submissions are also incredibly dangerous. As at any point, you know, someone can always break up the pin before three. But at any point, you can tap and you're eliminated. Belly to belly by B.A. Taiko. B.A. Taiko did qualify for the Elimination Chamber by beating the newly debuted uh, or recently debuted Potato. Adura Potato. He will be mo move, uh, moving to the loser's bracket with Sleepy Pengu and we will have another qualifier tonight. Sleepy Pengu is now the legal participant and will be in his uh, representing his team right now. Looks like Sleepy and uh, B.A. Tycho had a little bit of a miscommunication there. Hurricane Rana onto the hockey stick. Sleepy rolls out of the way trying to get some space in between Mama Inu and himself. High knee up to the head. That is definitely not going to help 
Mama Inu's potential concussion, but she's crawling to the corner, trying to make it to her daughter, T the Sheba, tagged in. Out the gates, running. Off the ropes from the knee, bumps. Sleepy, busts open, B.A. Tycho. Don't tell me how I know, I just have a thing. I have a little tell for these things. One, kick out at one, though, by B.A. Tycho. Showing no, no sense of wear and tear. Moonsault misses. Lands a little bit on the table there. Spear onto the table. That takedown, not quite a spear, but a takedown. And now B.A. Tycho, butterfly DDT. Two first elimination, no. Mama Inu is still out cold on the outside. T kips up, filled with energy. B.A. Tycho and Sleepy Pango have done an amazing job. Kick out at one again. T's got to do a little bit more than that to put away B.A. Tycho. B.A. Tycho and Sleepy have done a fantastic job of isolating their opponents and making sure that this is a two-on-one match. Making sure one of their opponents are on the outside and they're left alone in the ring with both of them. But now it's T, the Sheba, and Mama Inu's time to try and get that momentum back. They got to start making smart tags and smart decisions to maintain... Their energy got T up for the go to Sleepy Connects to T the Sheba. Mama Inu is on the apron. The one, two. Kick out at two, though, I think. Yeah, I think T got the shoulder up. Mama Inu maybe would have broken it up there or maybe would have been too late. Mama Inu is sent to the corner again. And now T the Sheba is left all alone with BA Tycho and Sleepy expertly rolling out of the ring, though. Trying to create space, make sure that she can't be pinned or submitted in the ring. And now B.A. Tycho is taking the hockey stick to T. Sleepy on the top rope. Cross body doesn't quite connect all the way in front of the French-Canadian commentator's booth. And Sleepy expertly sees that Mama Inu gets back up and immediately goes after the non-legal participant to try and make this a two-on-one. But Mama Inu reverses it with an inverted DDT. DDT to the floor. This is the problem, though. Sleepy Pengu is the legal participant. If he gets counted out, Mama Inu throws it back in. Ooh, somersaults over. The legal participants and the non-legal participants battling it out. Because if T or Sleepy Pengu stay out of the ring for too long, oh, the stairs to Sleepy as B.A. Tycho and T still fight it out on the outside. We could see a countout elimination at some point. Mama Inu and T the, or and Sleepy Pengu fighting it out, but T shows up to fight her legal participant there. Sleepy's got T back up in the position for the go to Sleepy. Inverted DDT shades a la Mama Inu. Five count, six count. T backing off. Sleepy going for the chase though. Seven count. They need to get back in the ring unless they want to be counted out here. Eight count. T's got to get back in the ring. She's on the ground. Nine. T's on one knee. Oh, T's got to make it, though. I don't think T knows. Ten. T. I don't think T was aware that she was being counted out, or maybe she thought she was counted out, leaving Mama Inu to the wolves here. Justice never sleeps. Cannonballing. B.A. Tycho cannonballing off the top rope to the floor. Mama Inu... All alone. Can't We have never seen someone go from the sole survivor spot like Mama Inu. Mama Inu has already taken so much damage. Potentially been concussed. And B.A. Tycho does have a little bit of uh, leeway here. He could just get counted out and fight Mama Inu on the outside. But B.A. Tycho makes it back into the ring. Six count. We could see a double count out elimination. Her team Justice Never Sleeps. No, B.A. Tycho sees that Mama Inu's getting up. Breaks the count, though. Mama Inu makes it back into the ring. Two-on-one is such a dangerous position, and no one's been able to come back from it. Tilt-a-whirl, neckbreaker. Rolls up B.A. Tycho, though. Kick out at one. B.A. Tycho is still feeling it. Mama Inu has blood dripping. In plain sight connects. B.A. Tycho... One, two, no, Mama Inu. I thought he had that and was going to move on to fight Unchained and Gareth in the next round, but no. B.A. Tycho 
is still in this with Mama Inu. Mama Inu barely holding on. She looks so dazed right now. She looks rough. Flying forearm kip up. Still got some energy in the tank here. Sends B.A. Tycho into the corner. Maybe looking for an equalizer here. Those steel steps might just have to do it. I think the closest team to ever go from the sole survivor spot was both Minty and Rize, who nearly had it. Rize maybe a little bit more than Minty. Hurricane Rana to B.A. Tycho. Mama Inu has taken so much damage early on in the corner of the barricade there. Neck breaker to the floor. Could maybe be looking for that uh, count out elimination for B.A. Tycho. Kind of closing off that one corner. Bottlenecking where they go. Six count. B.A. Tycho is getting troused here. Oh, throws him into the barricade. Seven count. Eight. B.A. Tycho's out cold on the ground, but Mama Inu doesn't. I don't know if it's the concussion or she doesn't want it to go out this way. Breaks the count at eight, nearly nine. And B.A. Tycho is back at it. I don't know if B.A. Tycho will give her that liberty. Suplex. On the floor, B.A. Tycho is, is violent here. Throws B.A. Tycho into the barricade again. Five count, though. We're back in this position. B.A. Tycho in trouble. Mama Inu, six count. Waiting for something. That's what she's waiting for. Seven. Eight count. B.A. Tycho's back up to his feet, though. Goes after Sleepy. Nine count. B.A. Tycho makes it back in the ring. Mama Inu is alone. Uranagi connects. Mama Inu might just be put out to pasture here. Three, Justice never sleeps. Moves on to the next round of the winner's bracket. And a, like a truly dominant performance by B.A. Tycho. Sleepy did what he needed to do, but B.A. Tycho kind of dominated that entire match. Sleepy Penguin, B.A. Tycho will move on to face Unchained Awesome and Gareth Unpardon. Sleepy's got a history with Gareth and Unchained. B.A. Tycho's got a history with Gareth Unchained. How will that... How will that match go as we move on to our semi-main event of the evening? The only non-tournament or qualifying match of the night. It will be Idols Competition 1-on-1. -on -one. Let's get it. All right, it's time for our third match of the evening. It will be Idol Division one-on-one -on -one contest. And the last time we saw this competitor was in the ring with Glitchy Bastards. It is Rocky making their way to the ring. Rocky has yet to uh, has yet to qualify for the elimination chamber, and they will be in an in elimination chamber qualifier. The ultimate wild card in this match, or in these, in the division right now. Nobody knows what to expect from Rocky. S sending chills down your spine as she walks to the ring. The newest idol in the division. She will be in a triple threat match. With Dr Dancing with Draven and Rize. But tonight she will be in singles competition against one of those two competitors. Rocky could potentially start her career and have a big match immediately. If she wins her qualifier, if she wins her qualifier next week, she will be put in the elimination chamber and could be the fastest idol division champion we've ever seen since someone debuted other than maybe the first one, I guess. Rocky is Truly terrifying and has a unique style and build compared to many of the other idols in the division. She's not massive. She's not, like, necessarily quick. She uses an unorthodox style, unlike anyone else. 
to deal to dish and deal as much damage as possible and if any if rocky is anything like their namesake you know early on in their career they may not be as successful as later on so watch out for this one but their challenge their challenger here their opponent tonight will be the self-proclaimed panda archon herself rize rize will be facing rocky next week in a triple threat to qualify for the elimination chamber and luck and and everything has not really been on rize's side when it comes to these stuff so, you know like rize is constantly taken out of these big matches these multi-man matches hasn't had much luck very early on they get taken out and now they're the one of the only three in these qualify for the elimination chamber that have been randomly selected to be in the odds the odd ones out the triple threat and it's going up against draven who no one really has good opportunities against nobody has you know good chances against and if Rize loses the triple threat, she's moved to the loser's bracket with even more people in a multi-man match. So if luck isn't necessarily on Rize's side here, maybe can show Rocky and make a statement, maybe send a message to her two opponents to, to tomorrow, next week. Bell is rung out the gates. Rocky slides. Slide tackles Rize. I said, I said Rocky's not that fast, but apparently I am absolutely wrong. Rize is one of the wonders of the world of MPW, you know. There's something to be said about success. Is that truly the, uh, is, is success the amount of wins you get? Is the success the amount of titles you hold, the amount of championships you win? Or is success about how many butts you put in seats? And I think Rize is one of those competitors that everybody wants to see, win or lose. She is nothing but exciting, whether she's on the, on the good side or the bad side. You never know what quite to expect from Reza. You could get a spear out of nowhere, a hand of God to the face. Depending on how this match goes, this could be very good for Reza. You know, scouting out her potential com competition. Oh my God, just clobbering. Headbutts to the dragon of Rocky there. Reza might be... Ooh, uses her momentum against her. Reza might be able to scout out her opponent here, maybe damage Rocky a bit. You know, don't want to take too much damage going into a very big match like your Elimination Chamber qualifier. Submission hold immediately locked in, trying to wear down her opponent early without using too much energy, but Rocky's going to fight out of it. Now Rocky's... Oh, full 360 tossing Rize by the ears like I said Rocky knows how to just maneuver your body so perfectly off the ropes with that punch to the face two heavy hitters here tonight this match is not a qualifier this match isn't a number one contenders this match is just for bragging rights and to get momentum going and slap across the face Rocky known for their slaps and it looks like Rocky is going for something big here Kick to the stomach. Power bomb position. Rize trying to fight out of it, though. And does successfully. Could have seen a power bomb to the apron. Right in front of the French Canadian commentator's booth. Rize scouts it, though. Drops the knees. And Moonsaw. Oh, no. Handsprings backwards with the knees. The athleticism of Wandering Dragon, a.k.a. Rocky. I mean, Rocky, a.k.a. Wandering Dragon, but you know how it is. The disrespect. It looks like uh, Rocky hasn't learned to uh, respect their their seniors here, and I think Reza is going to have to instill some respect with them as they get to a count of six. They sort of stand off and say, you know what, let's agree to just get back in the ring. Kick to the gut. Could we see a Canadian Destroyer? connects with Rize putting Rize inside out really close to the ropes though one two kick out of two completely contorting the back and the legs of Rize just completely flattening her like a pancake 
And it looks like Rize is going to go for a ride. Lost. And no, Rize's already got scouted. The thickest drop kick in the business. Spear connects. Rocky's very close to the ropes, though. One, two, kick out of two. Rocky's got to watch out again, instilling that respect to Rocky, making sure that she doesn't take Rize too lightly. Rocky lost her debut match. Moonsault off the top connects. Rize, we don't see Rize go up very, go up high very often, but when she does, she connects powerfully. She took out uh, Tyranno Maximum many, many weeks ago by jumping off the top rope, going for a hurricane run. A hand of God connects. Rize in complete control here. Getting hit from all sides is Rocky. Sidewalk slam or sidewalk backbreaker. And now chewing at the hands of Rize. Just gnawing on the fingies. That's not, I don't think that's technically legal, but referee's discretion as always. Off the ropes, leg drops right on the neck. All the weight onto her windpipe. My God. And now moving Rize into the center of the ring. Looking to put away her next week's challenger. And she does. Crushing the windpipe of Rize. Rocky. Maybe instilling some fear into Rize and picking up her first win. An impressive fight from both sides. Rocky taking everything, but Rize. Maybe this could potentially be what happens next week. Could Rocky be moving to the Elimination Chamber? Or can Rize pick up? Look at that. Right on the right in the left eye there of Rocky. Bright pink from that hand of God. And we will move on to our main event, which will be a qualifier match for the Icon Division for their Elimination Chamber. It is time for our main event of the evening. It will be Idol or Idol Icon Division qualifier match for the Icon Division Elimination Chamber. It will start off with Flair Zero. Flair has been having some decent luck when it comes to the Double Eliminator Random Selection Tournament as they have moved further as he has moved further on with his wife Glitchy Bastards. In the, uh, in the tournament, in the loser's bracket, they're looking to make it all the way through losers to championship finals. Glitchy just qualified for the elimination chamber, so can Flair not necessarily join her, but join her in the illustriousness of being in that elimination, the first ever elimination chamber. Flair Zero beat... Uh, beat Rize and Minty Clovers in the tag team tournament to move on in the losers bracket so maybe with all this momentum for Flair Zero he can make it to all the way to the end Flair Zero could potentially come out champion anyone could come out champion this is the craziest we've ever had for a championship match so many variables which might be uh, maybe will be Flair's downfall as Flair is a technical guy he, he follows he follows what he knows and so maybe with all these variables it's going to be too much to compute and flair is going to overheat but we'll see if flair can even make it past this match if not he will be meeting losers and losers bracket the only two right now is potato and sleepy pengu but his opponent will be gaelic angel who has had Nothing but trouble in the past couple weeks. He hasn't uh, really been able to pick up too many wins. He's in loser's bracket. Round two of loser's bracket with Schmeep's World in the double random selector eliminator tournament and lost to Potato in Potato's debut match. Angel's been having some struggles with uh, with one-on-one -on -one matches. Maybe the loser's bracket might be refreshing for him. Wasn't able to pick up that win to get that golden opportunity. But Angel is here, and he's here to face Flair. Two very calculated, two very smart competitors. I'm very interested. We've seen these two battle it out before, but I'm they're pretty equal, I would say, when it comes to 
in-ring ability. It's a, just about that kill factor. Who can get that kill move off first and pick up the win? Move on and join Unchained and BA Tycho in the Elimination Chamber alongside Drag Thulu, the Icon Division Champion. The Icon Division Champion, not the Icon Division Championship. That would be strange. We will have one more one-on-one -on -one qualifier next week. And if you're good at, you know, subtraction, you will understand that the last two remaining icons in the division will be none other than Merlin GTB. And he will be facing off against Gareth Unpardon, the man with that golden opportunity. And those two have been at odds so much recently. And we will learn a little bit more about that next week as Flare Zero and Angel will battle it out angel immediately sending flair over the top ropes angel <laughs> cross body over the top angel the most dangerous thing i think about angel is just the complete and utter lack of um of wanting to keep himself safe you know the keep the complete and utter lack of self-care this man will do anything to get a win, and he will just, like, it's not even about winning. It's just he'll do anything. He'll he'll use his body as a cannonball. He'll just, like, crash his head into the floor as long as his legs land on you. Like, he really doesn't matter. It doesn't care. He's concussed every single day. Like, he, he just, he gets concussed walking to the ring. This man is absolutely buck wild, and yet he keeps the composure of a of a fucking navy seal he is incredible he just hasn't been able to pick up those big wins yet it's that kill factor i was saying before he's able to hit all these fancy moves but can he put it away at the end of the day just incomplete control here power bomb jackknifes flare head bouncing off the bottom rope looking up at the lights flare zero maybe for a god's last gift but no reverses with that northern light suplex no bridge pin Foot was in the ropes. Angel DDT. Goes for the pin early on to Flare Zero. Kick out at one, though. Way too early to call it for anyone here. Now Flare's got Angel up. Leaves him, hangs him to dry. Flare loves to target every single individual part of his opponent's body, making sure that, you know, at least something isn't working. They always say that, like, you know, if your arms hurt, you know, punch yourself in the knee so you forget about it. But with Flair, he just hurts every part of your body. So you can't, you can't do that. You're always thinking about it. Off the ropes, judo throw. Going up top is Flair Zero. Maybe looking for that elbow drop. Moonsault completely whiffs it. I think I just heard a rib crack as he crashes and burns on the cement floor. Bulldogs. Angel into the ground. Chops him in the corner, lights him up. Reverse into the corner, single leg drop kick. DDT to the floor. They do have till the count of 10. We haven't seen a double count out, but I guess... The oh throws Angel is not uh unfamiliar with fighting in the crowd. Seven count. I think Angel uh was having some flashbacks there. He saw the red head of Flair and just sent Flair into the crowd. Some PTSD. Completely catching Angel off guard though with Flair. Flair going for that moonsault again. Back to the well. Doesn't quite connect with it. Crashes and burns. Angel still in it though. Russian leg sweep to the back of the neck. Angels eyeing his opponent here. Flare DDT. The damage to Angel's head. You know, scientists will study his brain after he retires. Flair is working over every inch, trying to pull him away from the ropes, maybe looking for a pin. Nope. We'll go for a Boston Crab, maybe? 
Flair is trying to lock in a Boston Crab here. Angel is very close to the ropes. He could try to crawl, but that is just that I have felt a Boston Crab before, and it is it sucks. Okay, that is not a fun move to be in. But Angel flips Flair over for a pin. Beautifully done. Dude, I don't know if any of you guys have been in a Boston Crab. That thing sucks. Just completely stretching out both your legs and spines with a person's weight on your back. Holy crap, that hurts. God's last gift connects. Doesn't, uh, doesn't cradle the legs, though. Maybe a little bit too close to the ropes for Angel's liking, or Angel really wants to be able to put him away here. Flair's arms are a little bit too short to box with God there. As Angel continues with this momentum, sending Flair to the floor. But it, as I said, it's the kill move. Angel had a little bit of a shot there. Could have potentially pulled off a kill move. Was just unable to get it off. Could this be back, uh, back body slam? Back body drop? This could be Angel's uh, hubris there. Where he thinks, okay, I'll just start you know, fighting more. And just viciously busting Flair open. Flair is... Flair and Angel are not uh, unfamiliar with just being busted open constantly. The elbow of Flair being stomped on. Five count. They have till the count of ten to get back in. They like popped something on Flair's face. I don't know what's causing all that blood, but geez Louise. And now can Flair take this advantage? Did, did Angel throw his opportunity away? Below zero, no, scouted by Angel. Off the ropes, flat jack, flapjack. Goes into the pin, one, two, no, ooh! Flair grabbed the ropes at the last second, ref didn't see it, and Angel is gonna move to the elimination chamber. Flair grabbed the bottom ropes. And, and the ref, it was just split second. The ref didn't see it. Angel is moving to the Icon Division Elimination Chamber. He is qualified. And Flair is moving to the loser's bracket. A controversial win to say the least. But I would say that that was such a split second decision. That it would have been near impossible for the referee to see that. The referee would have been so focused. Got to make sure that the... When you're on that three count, you have to make sure that those, those shoulders are down. Because if you count three and the shoulders are up, that's even worse. Angel will be moving on. And that was your main event, folks. And we will move on to the next episode next week. I'll see you guys there. I was Masu Pro Wrestling. This is Masu Pro Wrestling. I'll see you there.